Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of In the Driver's Seat with Dubizel. In today's episode, we're going to talk about a very important event that's going to happen on the 2nd and 3rd of March, so save the date. We're also going to talk about personal buying experiences that we regret, me and Chris. For this and more, stay tuned in this episode. So with Fouad's introduction out of the way, let's start with the biggest news story this week. And that, of course, is the Dubizzle Cars Yard weekend sale. That's quite a mouthful, isn't it? Yeah. Is back for the second time. That's right. We were so successful late last year. The rain even came down, but that didn't stop us from selling cars. 100%. And we decided to bring it back again one more time. But I don't think it's going to be the last time we're going to do this. And this year, or better yet, no, I'm not going to say this year, because I'm pretty sure we're going to have it again later on. We might, we might. Look, the, the people liked the event very much. We had a huge amount of buyers that came. We sold a very good amount of cars and everyone was happy. So 2nd and 3rd of March, guys, save the dates because this is when you all want to grab the opportunity and come to the Dubizel Yard to uh, grab one of the deals. Yeah, and what are those deals, you ask? Well, mm -hmm. we have a total of six deals besides some great prices on some affordable cars that you can get at the Dubizel Cars Yard weekend sale. We have things like attractive offers on both finance and insurance. Mm -hmm. And we'll have on-site Emirates MBD to help you with your loan processing. We'll have on-site, is it an insurance broker Yeah, as well? there's going to be an insurance broker as well to get the quotation straight away. And that is MP, if I'm not no, mistaken? MP is the warranty actually provider. So which is also, we're providing a 12-month warranty on uh, most of the cars. And MP will be there if you want to ask about the warranty and what does it cover and all the information about it as well. If you're looking for a budget-friendly car, we've got prices starting at just 30,000 dirhams and 700 dirhams monthly installment. So if you're looking for an affordable car, the Dubizel Cars Yard weekend sale is the place for you to be. Don't forget, 2nd and 3rd of March. I don't know how many times we're going to say the date because we have to remember it ourselves. Yeah. We keep forgetting it. I told someone today it's on the 100%. 22nd of February because I don't know why. It just... You're doing your own event, huh? Exactly. <laughs> I'm having my own Dubizel Yard weekend sale cars uh, thing in majiggy with uh, <laughs> uh, any car. Volvos Dubizel only. Cars, only Volvos. Dubizel Cars Yard weekend sale. Yeah, but my version is only Volvo. So V90s, V70s, V60s. We do have an XC90. We do, but that's not enough. We need more Volvos. Mm. I don't think. What do you guys want? Do you want more Volvos or more budget-friendly cars? Are you saying a Volvo's not budget-friendly? Mm? I take offense to that. Uh, I'm saying what, what you get for the price. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, guys. It's actually a very budget-friendly car. But is that the end of the offers that we have? Because I'm pretty sure we're missing at least one offer. So first of all, there's something that... All of you need to know that all the cars that are going to be there have an inspection report as well. And this is not an offer, yes. This is what we offer in Dubizel cars. However, this is still very attractive because every single car that's there will have a 120-point inspection that will be shown to you upon request. And don't forget free valley parking as well on the day. 100%. And there will be over 50-plus cars that you can view on site. But all of them, and I'm pretty sure for why you can help me with this, I take it even though the cars that we have on site, there will be others that are part of the managed fleet Will they also have these offers? So one of the uh, very important things that we forgot to say as well is that most of the cars will have free registration. Who can't say so, no to free registration, right? Hey. So we have 12 months warranty, we have free registration, we have uh, attractive rates on insurance and finance, we have cars starting from 30,000 dirhams and up to your budget, we have also cars up to 250, 300,000 dirhams. So guys, there is, whatever your taste is, there's a car for you, so don't miss the event. So. There is a car that I have my eye on there, and that is the Hilux. And I know that when it comes around to the yard sale, it's going to be sold. So yes. I had to make the decision, do I buy it now mm -hmm. or do I wait? Because the unfortunate thing is the adventure spec is so... There aren't many in the market. There aren't, no. There really aren't that many. You know, I had Especially a look on... Especially almost brand new, the car that only has a few miles on the clock. A few miles? 50,000 on the clock. Is that new? Yeah, well, 50,000 for, for, uh, for a Hilux adventure. Bro, look at him. He's bringing out the sales experience right now, live on camera. Yeah, but come on. It's actually true. You know? Most of the cars, the Hilux, you see, they're, they're going to have over 100,000. Yeah, okay, I get that. I mean, it's a 20, 2020 model, right, if I'm not mistaken? 2020 or 2021. Yeah, yeah so that's 50K over the course of like three or four, three or four years. years. Well, if it's a 21, then it is a 22. It was bought out in 2020. So that's about, 100%. give or take, 11,000 kilometers per year, to maybe 12. Yeah. Something like that. that. So that's less than average, right? And it comes with a full inspection report. And I got to drive it when we did the shoot last time. Yeah, you did. But... And he fell in love. Yeah, I did. I really did. <laughs> I don't know why I like the car so much. I just guess, I guess it's a pickup truck that you just you can't kill. But now what we're going to talk about are car buying decisions that we regret. Mm -hmm. Now, 
I'll be honest, I probably don't have as long as a list that you do because I've only ever bought four cars. I know there's been a lot that I haven't bought and I have been driving since 2016. And I know a lot of people do like to change their car every year, but when I find a car that I really like, I stay with it for a couple of years. <laughs> so for me, the biggest regret that I, uh, probably that I do actually any time I buy a car is I never get it inspected, to be honest. Because I always just think, right, I'm buying it from somebody. They seem like a genuine person. The car seems great. I'm not going to get it inspected because why should I waste my time doing it? And that is a regret in itself because I bought a car. I bought a Dodge Charger, um, 2007 model, I think it was, 2007 or 2008. When was that? This was in 2000 and I want to say 17 or 18 I bought the car. So it was around 10 years old. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it was a V8 5.7. So of course, you know, when you're that age, you're you're 27, you want to have a cool car. You know, I've gone from a Volvo V70 to a Dodge Charger. And when I bought the car, it seemed great. You know, it was a great deal. It was less than 20K. Um, Again, when you're buying a V8, it's awesome. Petrol prices back then were so cheap. So, you know, who cared? It was a V8 muscle car. It was amazing. It had a screen in the back that you could turn around and you could actually use it as an AUX jack. So I'd play my music through the rear TV screen. So it's it was, an additional screen. It's not stock. It's no, uh, no, no. Market. It was stock because a lot of them have rear screens oh, the in one the back. In the, the one in the roof, on the roof, right? Yeah. Stuck on the roof, the way you can turn. But this one okay. was in an awkward place. It was actually on the center console at the back. So sometimes you'd hit it with your elbow when you, when you, wrote, when you went Pew! like this. Um, I've never seen a charger with a center screen. There, there. It wasn't really an option that people wanted because why mm-hmm. would you want that in the back of your car? Fair enough. So the reason why I regret the decision is not because of the, car. the V8 and it's not because of the fuel efficiency and it wasn't the car itself. It was more the mechanical side of things, right? And this is where an inspection comes in really handy because I was none the wiser, right? I bought it while my best friend was out of town. So he's usually my go-to guy to help me make an informed decision. And when I bought the car, it just the guy just said, oh yeah, it's because the car gets hot and it makes weird noises. Me being an absolute idiot, I thought, <laughs> yeah, it's summertime. It's perfectly normal for a car to make a massive <laughs> noise when you shift gear. Mm-hmm. Later, I found out it was the differential that went. Yeah. And it was a loud noise as well. It was literally just like, like you shifted gears, you put it from park to drive, and it was literally just like... Somebody hit, hit, yeah, hit the Yeah, it was like a yeah. real big clunk. And that's, that's one car I really regret buying because yeah. I didn't do diligence, right? I didn't yeah. think about it. I just thought, bleh. I'm That's just going to buy this car. I want to be cool. Look, if, if, you, if you have been told that this is one, two, three from the beginning and you still bought the car, that would have been fine. But I think, like you said, the biggest regret is that because we get emotional sometimes and we buy the car without getting it. It's like, oh, you know what? I like this car. It drives fine. Let me get it. Which is totally fine, which I did as well. By the way, this is, I'm going to tell a story about the, the first car I bought in Dubai. So I was only like one and a half year in the company. I got my driving license for like six months and searching for a car. And I wanted a V8 as well. So uh, there was a Grand Cherokee, which is, I think, 2007. Blue color, which was a very rare color that I've seen on a, on a Grand Cherokee. So it's light blue turquoise color. And I, the car had like 140,000 kilometers on the clock. Also 10 years old, like you said. And I loved it. The car drove very nice, right? And there was something that came like in the gear when I was putting, what I, because it's automatically four-wheel drive, but you have the four-wheel low that you can press it. When I pressed the four-wheel low, it gave some error, but... The seller assured me, no, no, it's nothing, but just because you didn't stop properly and put park and stuff like that. I tried it again, it worked, but that concerned me a little bit, but not too much. So I was like, you know what? I know a little bit in cars, the car drives well. I bought the car, oddly enough, five months later, a lot of issues started happening. I had to change the head gasket on that car three times. And after two years, two and a half years, I sold it scrap. So I lost all my money on that car. I literally sold all my money. Like I sold it for like two and a half, three thousand dirhams probably. That's how much I sold it. And it wasn't, didn't have that many miles on the clock. It just wasn't taken care of properly. And like you said, I was in Abu Dhabi. I went all the way there to, and I'm not going to come back to Dubai. I like the car. The price was good. We good negotiation. And I thought I'm getting a great deal. But that's the thing, guys. Don't look for a great deal in terms of prices only. Because sometimes you look for a good price and you think, oh, I got a great deal. You don't know what's hidden under there. So before looking for a good deal, a good deal in my mind right now is not only an attractive price, is a good market price, but a good condition car. That's why, like Chris said, 100% inspect your car. And if you don't know how to inspect it, which 90% of the people don't know how to inspect it because they let go, even especially if you're a good person, you know, have knowledge about cars, but it's your car, 
you're gonna say no to some, it's okay for some red flags, which is why it's always a good idea to get your car inspected. Yeah, it's that's such a weird coincidence though that we both bought kind of like a 2007 car, 100%. a V8 that yeah. was a Mopar. And that was Mopar, yeah. Because there's something I forgot to say as well. One of the reasons that I had to get rid of the car, I also had head gasket issues. Yeah. Uh, I think it was replaced at least once. And it was really unfortunate once because I had a friend of mine who flew out, right? And I hadn't seen him in a while. And it actually went while he was in the car with me. And I was Oof. so embarrassed at the time as well. Because like it, when I grew up, I was the last person to get my driving license. I was the last to drive, right? Mm. So this was my opportunity to drive my friend around this time <laughs> instead. And it literally, it went off in a petrol station round the corner from where we had stopped. You know, the reason for the head gasket to go isn't just the engine, isn't just the car. I think I was a little bit ir irresponsible as well with it. So what happened, I gave it to my, a friend of mine. I was going to do something and the car got hot and he drove the car while hot. That's how the ga head gasket blows, you know, it doesn't blow just directly. So there was a leak in the radiator, which was leaking uh, water and the car got hot. When the car gets hot, guys, that's why the indicator is there. Park the car instantly. Take it on a recovery, don't drive it because this would lead whatever the car you have. If you drive the car well, it's very low on water. This would lead the engine to overheat and the head gasket to blow. Man, it's uncanny, the resemblance. This is exactly what happened to me yeah. because the radiator also cracked. So I tried to top it up, tried to get it to a, uh, a garage. So I called my garage guy. I took it there and I think it sat for like a year and then I eventually scrapped <laughs> it for like two or 3,000 dirhams. You want to know the worst part as well? The worst part is that before scrapping it and knowing that it's the head gasket and all, I, th I thought so, but he said, no, we have to close the compression because if you take it to any good mechanic your car, he wouldn't directly tell you, oh, this is where the problem with your car. He has to inspect it properly. So to inspect the engine, what happened with it, he had to close the uh, compression. To close the compression, he had to put new radiator, new uh, tubes for the radiator. And then after that, he turned on the car. Oh, that's what's happening. The head gasket's gone. So now after I paid for the radiator and all that stuff, like one and a half thousand dirhams, then I had to scrap the car. So it wasn't a nice experience. Those are our buying experiences that we regret. Now, mm -hmm. what about selling? Now, mm -hmm. I know you've owned a lot of cars, not just here, but back home in Lebanon. Yeah, back home. I've owned a total of, I said before, four cars, and I've, I've sold a total of three, and I'm pretty sure of those three, I scrapped all three of them, okay. except the car that I have now. And that's because, obviously, I bought the cheapest car I could possibly find. <laughs> no one is going to buy it, so I just thought, you know what? Why? I don't need the car anymore, <laughs> do I? No one else wants the car, so get rid of it. I'll scrap it. So... I don't know if I really have one that's sort of a regret when selling. Both my first and third car, I do kind of wish I still had because obviously the V70, I wish I kept because now I have the newest version of it. Mm -hmm. It would have been nice to have both. And then with the C30 that I owned, I love that thing. It was a little, little rocket ship. It was like a little tiny hatchback with a massive glass thing at the back there. But I had a really interesting experience with that car because the engine went on it twice. The brakes just didn't work at some point at all. And I had a really and he long- He regrets selling it, huh? He I, just regrets selling any Volvo. I do. I regret selling all my Volvo. Volvos <laughs> from the beginning to the end, you know, like a Volvo company. I would love to have every Volvo that I've ever owned, plus more that I'd like to have as well. But that one, so I think of the two, I would probably say I regret selling the C30. Mm. Yes, it had massive problems. Yet it had the longest brake pedal humanly possible. <laughs> you had to really just stamp your foot down just to get it to stop. Oh, you feel it's in the engine already. It was <laughs> literally like two sponges with the brake calipers, right? They okay. were squeezed together and the car just would not brake for the <laughs> longest time. Um, and I, I made the decision once to drive it quite a long distance and then I instantly regretted it because to stop, I had to pull the handbrake up, right? Oh. So it was like a proper like ee kind of situation <laughs> and it was the worst thing to have in traffic as well because you're like, I'm going to hit the guy, I'm going to go, no, I'm going to I pull the handbrake instead. And yet you regret selling it. I do because I should have, what I should have done is I should have kept the car, even though, by the way, <laughs> I don't know if I should tell this on air. You know what, I'm going to say it anyway. I actually almost got run over by the car. <laughs> Because I did the, the stupidest thing ever. So the control arm on the right broke, okay? Mm -hmm. So I couldn't steer it. So I was trying to park the car. And I was in such a rush that I forgot to take the car out of gear. I left it in neutral. Okay. So it, and we were on an did incline. Did you put the handbrake up? No. Oh, so very so nice, yeah. I tried to push the car in a direction that it would go into. But the car obviously is a lot more powerful than I am. 
So when I pushed the car, the car pushed back, obviously, and it almost ran me over. <laughs> Luckily, a really nice car cleaning guy saw what happened. He literally sprinted across the parking lot and got in the car and yanked the handbrake and said, dude, what are you doing? I said, man, I didn't know what to do. It was one of these times I was just like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. Seriously, like this is just baffling. <laughs> but I do regret selling the car because I should have kept it because I really, really like that car. And I just cannot find another one that's in good condition. I like the turbo version, but yeah, I'm never finding one of those. That's a nice, nice story. You know, actually, one car that I regret selling, obviously, it's a BMW. But it's not, it wasn't my No decision. way, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> <coughs> never would have expected it in never. a million years, yeah. It's like me not buying a Volvo. Exactly. So, actually, I was very young then. I think it was the first BMW that I drove. Not drove, like, it was the first BMW that was for me, you know. So, we had a Honda Accord in 1990. And I saw this beautiful 325, 1991, I think, or 1992, with a V6, you know, 2.5 engine. It was an amazing car. Havanos, manual gearbox. So I don't remember if I had my driving license at the time. Maybe I was 17 or 18, so on the verge of it, you know? So I got the car, and we had it for seven days only, right? And on, like, the fifth day, I was driving the car. I was driving normally. I wasn't speeding, but I went into an incline and there was a very nice diesel truck that went before us and he left some diesel for us to enjoy on the road. <laughs> well, obviously, I didn't know that there was diesel on the road, so I was <laughs> taking the turn on the third gear. I put the second gear just to give it a little bit and I was that passenger at the time. The car started spinning oh. one, two, three, four, five, like I swear to God, like six spins and there's the sewage uh, on the side of the road and I ended up there. So one tire ended up there thanks god there was no damage to the car got a few friends i was still in my town right i got a few friends there and we lifted the car up put it back the car was totally fine nothing happened to the car but fortunately my father was there <laughs> <laughs> my father was passing with my uncle and he saw me on the side of the road and he saw the turns and people you know the one i judged oh i think he was taking the turn at like 140 and i'm like if i was taking the turn at 140 i wouldn't have stopped here believe me <laughs> you were further there somewhere instantly my dad took the car and he just Sold that car straight away, and he got me back the Honda Accord that I had, that I hated. <laughs> and he didn't even have a proper handbrake on the oh, car because man. I used it so much. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was like, it was the, this is the car I so regret selling because I would have enjoyed that car so much. Oh. It was only five days, and I was already at attached to the car so much. So don't make the same mistake that we did. Buy no. a pre-inspected car before 100%. you do that, or if there is not an inspection report readily available, get the car inspected. Because of course, safety is top priority. That will save you from any faults and any headaches you might have, but then also you might lose some cool car stories. I think I've got some more that I could share. I think I might have just shared one before. I really, honestly, when I think about it, I don't think I have many stories about driving. I really don't. I have many stories about cars saving my life. So if you want to hear more of our driving experiences, I know we don't really talk about them a lot, and I don't think I really have a lot to talk about, but I'm pretty sure for Wired Stories, we want to hear more of them. Let us know in the comment section below, because yeah. we can have more of this if you want. Honestly, mm -hmm. I think it's great to share our experience. Yeah, it's nice. We, we talk a lot about cars, but we don't talk about our experiences driving cars, do we? Correct. So let us know in the comment section below, and don't forget to save the date. What are they again, Fouad? Second and third of March, guys, and if you haven't bought a car and you want an inspected car, just remember that all the cars that we have there are fully inspected, 120 points inspection on each and every car. That is available at the yard event. And also the unbeatable offers that you just can't miss as well. Until next time, we'll see you on the next episode of In the Driver's Seat with Debizzle, or we'll catch you at the Debizzle Cars Yard Weekend Sale. Thank you very nice.